<laughs> Hold up your cup, your mug, your chalice, your glass. Fill it with your favorite liquid. I like coffee, but we don't have any coffee because our coffee, coffee maker broke. So I've got tea. Yeah. And join us for the simultaneous sip. Okay. Great project. Oh, go turn it. Betty, I literally it wasn't told me. you to mute it. Okay, it was totally me. Yes, it was. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about personality types, um, but specifically in the context of uh, a project that my daughters wrote about their mother um, and how to best uh, love her and I've lost my daughters, but they're coming back. And um, I think the basic idea is to try to understand the other person and how they want to be appreciated, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to assuming that other people want to be appreciated the way you do. And it yeah. takes a lot more work. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe, um, Sumi, I know you kicked this one off. So if you want, I could do a little focus and you could just walk us through the project? Uh, that, sure, sounds that good? good, yeah. All right, cool, go for it. Okay, so this article is specifically on the ISFJ personality type, uh, which is my, our, I learned my mom's personality type, and basically talking about the ways that you can make them feel the most loved and hopefully can also be helpful to other people who may have a loved one with this personality type or something similar. Uh, and so <clears throat> defenders are one of the most loving and gentle personality types, but are also willing to stand up for the people that they love and are very loyal and generous to those that they care about. And it's also but it can be sometimes challenging for them to feel like their actions are recognized and appreciated because they are also very humble and they don't really like talking and talking about themselves. And so they're in this article, we talk about, which is one reason why she's not on the show. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> like she's all like, that's great. Thank you for the invitation. I'm going to go do all these great things in the background. Yeah. yeah. And um, so there are some ways that the defender personality type most appreciates you in terms of like reciprocating their actions and um, making them feel loved. So the first is by showing them that you recognize their efforts, because a lot of um, what defenders do are in the background in terms of just being very loyal and investing a lot in their relationships. Um, <clears throat> they're probably doing a lot more than you even realize. And so, but just communicating your appreciation often won't be enough because defenders are highly attuned to like your actions and what you show them through what you do. But it can also, but it will be very helpful to just that they know that you're aware of the efforts that they're putting in. Um, defenders are very uh, disciplined and systematic in their work. And and they generally go above and beyond in able to deliver high quality work, but they also rarely speak up on behalf of their efforts. And so this is also a good opportunity for their loved ones to advocate for their recognition on their behalf um, to show them that you recognize the work that they're putting in and aren't just taking it for granted. Um, another one is one of Defender's main love languages is acts of service and also generally display love in this way as well. Um, just acknowledging their actions, again, can be insufficient as they'll want re reciprocation in the way that they most appreci appreciate, which is through thoughtful actions. And a lot of it will depend on like the way that they show, like do acts of service towards you will generally be the type of actions that will be the most meaningful to them. And uh, so whether this is like doing chores or plan planning a trip for them uh, or doing their favorite activity with them. Uh, defenders also really appreciate when you follow through with promises and responsibilities. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out. Of sure. Okay, so 
I was thinking that Isla and I could then talk about the silver rule a bit sure. because it's a bit like, I, it's actually a little bit controversial mm -hmm. in the sense that we're saying that there's something wrong with a golden rule. Right. So um, Isla, do you want to maybe elaborate on this a little bit? We can have a little chat okay. about it. Well, the golden rule is says that you should treat others the way you want to be treated. And I think like everyone's different, right? Everyone has their own personality. And so everyone's going to want to be appreciated um, different ways. So I might really enjoy gift giving, but um, but Sume does, is not really into the whole gift thing. And so I might give her a bunch of gifts she doesn't need because I think, oh, treat other the ways you want to be treated. But that's not exactly the kind of thing she really appreciates. Um, and so then it's like, wait, why did you give me a bunch of these gifts? I mean, it's great, but I don't really see. So <clears throat> with... Um, so the silver rule says that you should treat others the way they want to be treated. And that takes more work because you have to look into their love language and you have to think more about them rather than just thinking about, oh, I like gifts. You must like gifts too. And kind of assuming that they're the same person. Okay. Yeah. So like, I think one context where the golden rule comes up a lot is in kindergarten right right and so like i think that's kind of more like a simple rule when it comes to just like basic human etiquette of we don't like being said like you're disgusting like <laughs> nobody has like generally speaking people don't like that you know right. there's like yeah. general like human things that we share in terms of just like treating people respectively right don't call somebody ugly yeah it's, it's not you know. really nice you know right if you don't have anything nice to say so i think that <laughs> i think that another way to think about the golden rule might be don't treat other people the way you don't want to be treated yeah mm. right more right. the opposites i remember when i was in kindergarten um when someone would tell me that i'd be like what do you mean i love being called ugly <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so so um that our our defender mommy is is sharing some comments, and I'm a debater type, which is the opposite. Yeah. So I'm seeing her comments, and I'm thinking, is that really true? Like, okay, so I'll give you an example, mommy. Um, <laughs> so you'll say everybody wants to be treated with kindness and respect. Yes, but not to a point where people are avoiding being honest and direct with me. Mm -hmm out of fear that they were being disrespectful or that I might interpret them as being unkind. Yeah. And that's why I think that the silver rule, it provides a lot more nuance and a lot more opportunity for people to try to understand the other person and really look at the individual context, because that's when it comes to personal relationships with other people, especially people in your family, those that you're, you have really close relationships with, that becomes really important to understand the nuances of that specific person because you live with them and you really want to, um, to, to have the best relationship with them. That may not be like, it doesn't necessarily make that much like practical sense in terms of putting so much effort and really trying to understand someone to the fullest extent to every single person that you meet because okay. you just don't have like that mental capacity right but i think especially for the people that are closest in your life it definitely makes sense oh that's a really good yeah. point mm -hmm. so that's a diff that's a distinction right mm -hmm. so like you're just walking down the street yeah you're saying hello you're not, you're, you're not like doing a myers briggs want to be said hello, hello to. to in the best way you you're know? right yeah do they right. want you uh, do they want me to like ask them how they're doing because 
they want to express their feelings and they feel like they can't express it <laughs> without other people right. like accepting it. Are they the and kind of person like, that's like annoyed when people say, how are you? And you're not supposed to be real because I want to get real right now. Like you don't really know these things yeah. when you're just walking by people. Mm -hmm. And that's also just kind of part of the reason why uh, that was included in my article is because for my article, it's more focused on the loved ones of defenders um, and not just kind of like, cause you're probably not really going to know if somebody's a defender unless you like at least have a, some sort of relationship with them, whether you're their friend or like their family member. It's also just an approximation. Everybody's yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, applying silver, silver rule to close relationships. Really yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. um, so could have said that in a very one short thing, of time. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be a 45 minute live stream podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one other one other, so one thing i've been trying to do is like when when uh, when mommy cooks i clean the dishes I'm trying right. to like do that without being told that's mm -hmm. something that i've been really yeah making an effort mm -hmm. and then like what i'm working on is that i um get up in the morning on time today i slept in for 20 minutes <laughs> that's sue's love language i think <laughs> Oh, uh, you're, you're, each, you're each other's love. You haven't written projects on that recently. So that's tough. That's tough. I think the main one is like to not take Sume's hair ties. Right. Actually, that's pet peeve. That's not really a love yeah, language. Yeah, not really. What's your love language, Sume? Should we talk about love language? I feel like that's a part of this. It's just love language. Well, actually, the I mentioned another love language in the article. Oh, really? Yeah. I should probably finish the article and then we can have a oh, discussion. Oh, okay, yeah. Do you want to pull up the actual article so people can read along with that's it? What I'm, that's what I was doing. Nice. Um, she just did it so fast, I didn't even see. Uh, okay. Okay. So after acts of service, <clears throat> yeah, I talk about the, the golden rule where a lot of people make the mistake of loving people in the way that they want to be loved, like treating other people as a the way you want to be treated but this has the embedded flaw with the assumption that everyone is the same and which is why we came up with the silver rule and um, another big love language for defenders is physical touch oh and boy. so the we're way talking about hugs yes, children we're talking about hugs. okay huggies basically um i'll demonstrate <laughs> and uh, the way that they display Love will generally um, align with the way they want to receive love as well. And so the sensing combined with the feeling trait combination makes it so that often defenders will appreciate physical gestures like an embrace or a hand on their shoulder. And sometimes all they need to feel better is a hug. Um, I added that. Yeah, I'll add that. <laughs> While defenders are big comfort friends for those they care about and pride themselves in being someone you can confide in, they're generally more reserved and careful with those that they kind of trust with their most intimate thoughts. And so combined with that hesitant instinct to share and a willingness to listen, they may struggle to feel understood at times. And so this is an opportunity for loved ones of defenders to um, to recognize subtle signals and ask them about how they feel and open up an opportunity for them to share and for you to listen. And defenders, like everybody, feel best when they when they feel understood, especially by those that they care about. Um, um, I know some of these things, but they go that you're right. <laughs> the last way you can help defenders feel love is by doing these appreciation in private. Quoted by an article on 16personalities.com on One defenders. One second. While we're live, right here. <laughs> Just kidding. Even All if right. you want to shout from the rooftops how much you love them, most defenders appreciate these displays of love when they're done far from the eyes of others. You wouldn't want to embarrass them, would you? No. <laughs> oh, whoops. It's okay, Daddy. Yeah. So in this article, I covered how to give back to one of the most giving personality types to help them feel understood and valued. We're all so different and interpret others' actions in dramatically disparate ways. It's incredibly hard to understand another human being, um, but by doing so or trying to do so, we can make other people feel supported and encouraged in ways we never would have otherwise. And so in today's world when everybody is, there are so many contentious issues, it becomes really important that we're able to appreciate the differences in other people and op be open to listening to others 
And one of the simplest ways we can do this is just by trying to really understand the people that we love that are closest to us in our lives. And the more we do this, the more you recognize that you really don't know anything about anybody. And that can help us have more empathy and willingness to listen, to have better solutions, to make the world a better place. And so, yep, that's my article. Oh, wow. Yeah, round of applause. Sorry, one second. Let me set down my tea. Okay. <laughs> Very good, Sime. Excellent. Thank you. No, 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 it's the other oh, way. I'm sorry, I'm bad. <laughs> Oh, Prince liked it too. Okay. <laughs> um, so maybe we could take a little focus off the defender. Oh, uh -huh. spot on. Okay, all right. <laughs> Whew, I gotta, got my got my work cut out for me. I'm just gonna have to read the manual. Um, <laughs> so, do you guys want to talk a little bit about yourselves? Okay. Go ahead, Isla. <laughs> I love talking about myself. And how, I love, can we, how can we love you better? Um, well, I think uh, one of my biggest love languages um, is gift giving. And so I really love like gifts, um, like under the Christmas tree, half of those gifts are for me. <laughs> and um, so I really like that. And I also really like quality time. It. There's somebody banging on a trash can or something. We're outside. under attack. <laughs> <laughs> there are downsides to living in an apartment. Yep. So Random loud noises. Occasionally someone brings out their cannon and decides to. I hate it when they do that. <laughs> I really like like fun quality time. Like I just really like it when other people just relax and play with me and do games and go on adventures and stuff so cool those are two things i really like that i appreciate okay suming oh. tell us about oh i know it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting my love language is that i wakes up at seven o'clock in the morning i would say it goes in the order of like quality time and acts of service on top and then maybe like words of affirmation under that and then the other ones not so much mm. oh yeah that's okay. it <laughs> yeah like okay so and sume and isla are opposite personality types mm -hmm. and mommy and i are opposites yeah and I think that the love languages probably have correlations to personality types. Definitely. Yeah. And it's oh, always yeah, easier. Definitely. It's always easier to to love other people the way that we want to be loved. It's very natural mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. So you two have a harder time, and mommy and I have a harder time of expressing each other's natural love. Yeah. I think. That's, that's which is why you just know, like kind of unfortunate. Yeah. Like. Well, I don't know if it's, it's like acts of service more like is acts of service that includes like following through on your responsibilities, right? You guys are shaking the table. No, whoops. You're shaking the camera. Um, We're making a better studio, but right now, yeah, it, our studio is on the table. Yep. <laughs> All right. Go on top of a stack of Harry Potter books. Oh yeah. yeah. Quality. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would say that acts of service does include following up, like do following up on your responsibilities but i think it's kind of just it's kind of like it's like a minimum isn't it <laughs> yeah like if you have a responsibility like, and you do it it's like that's not that's not like the way that i don't feel like oh my god i feel so appreciated yeah you okay. put away your dish <laughs> yeah that's kind of like if you don't throw it away your dish, then that you like really signals to me. Yeah, something. but I feel like since we're so different, th doing the dishes after lunch every day and doing that, that's like a big thing for me. It's a it, big like, thing for Isla. It's a lot for me. It's a big me. thing for Isla. And to not, like, I'm still working on the getting up in the morning thing, but I get up by nine so I can be up by okay. demo day. So, but it's like, since we're so 
different. That kind of feels a lot to me. But like, since you're more better at those things, it so might Sume makes like seem... gourmet without even any butter whole wheat <laughs> pizza that tastes better than Domino's. <laughs> and then Isla and I feel like we've really accomplished something when we take the tray that she used to bake it <laughs> and put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> and we're like, look at what we did. And Sume is just like, all right. <laughs> so here's so here's where I, I, I think that the love language bit, mm -hmm. totally get it. But I also think that there's another element to it, right. which is that it helps to also learn to appreciate the natural gifts of the other person. Right. Yeah. But that's like, I don't even know if I want to bring that up because that's you, even harder. It's like, that's something it's hard. so hard to, yeah. to actually show, to, to cultivate appreciation for how somebody else naturally creates value for you. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't necessarily, um, feel it as much and and the reason why i'm hesitant to bring that up is because the most important thing is to love other people the way they want to be loved right well one way i think that i and i kind of do that is through quality time because i think that i like i really really appreciate how isla can just bring a lot of like happiness and joy and like get me out of my work mode when we're which is like all the time. <laughs> Sime's Which is work very mode. Hard to do. She has two modes. She has sleep mode <laughs> and work <laughs> mode. Yep. Uh, and so that's. Um... <laughs> I have fun mode and trying to go to sleep mode and trying to wake up mode. Having party in my dreams mode. <laughs> yeah. No, right. She gets you out mm -hmm. of your shell, mm -hmm. right? But it's not like the natural way that you feel love because you, you don't naturally want to get out of your shell. Right. You naturally stay in work mode, mm -hmm. right? But and and I, after that kind of begrudging period of like, okay, fine, yeah. I'll go play hockey with you or something. And by the way, it's the foosball hockey <laughs> and, uh, then I have like a really good time and I, I never regret it afterwards. So. Yeah. And I feel similar to that with like mommy. She'll just want to sit down, have like put on something really calm, calming music, you know, and just listen to, um, just relaxing and having a, a, a nice quiet low key time. Nothing like oh, hardcore. God. Yeah. And at first I'll kind of I'm begrudgingly okay. like, okay not yeah. necessarily my favorite but then i'm right. really glad that she did because then i get a better night's sleep yeah and it's just kind of like amp myself down right. so i think cultivating and appreciate especially if you're talking about somebody who's dramatically different than you right if you're talking about like your hangout chill i don't even i don't have to think or try <laughs> friends yeah those are people that are just like you mm -hmm. right? very similar to you yeah yeah and for those I don't people, get that in this house. No, nobody gets that. You in this house. do more with mommy because right. you share the SF with her, and I share the NT with daddy. But we both like mommy, to adventure. But mommy, right? we adventure. mommy sure. always like she's always needs to do work, and so sometimes we don't get to play a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's and why I always want to play. I'm, that's I'm what playing. I always do. Uh, every time you say you want to go basketball, I'm like, let's go. Okay. Right. So we've got that adventure side, but then Sume and I have the whole like, let's get down to business, you know? Yeah. And so there's like, in this family, you kind of have to piecemeal it. Right. Because no two people in our family were like opposite sides of the yeah. corners. Of, so it doesn't come as natural, which is why, why you want to have some friends too, right. you know? Yeah. Folks, friends. you just go like, oh yeah. Just like people, actually every Friday we have our friends come by. That's been really great, but it's like different with your relaxed hangout friends. Like they're not meant to challenge your understanding of love language and make you stretch necessary. I mm. feel like that's easier to do in a family because with family, like kind of family is like built for love and growth. You know? All of my friends are just like me, but introverted. So they let me talk. Nice. 
<laughs> Relative to me, everybody I know is introverted. <laughs> it's just kind of the way it feels. All right. Um, well, um, this is a good conversation, um, but I think maybe we should wrap it up because we actually have a demo day at 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is a really good chat. So um, uh, thank you for sharing, ladies. It's yep. a great project. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.